I'm back hunting one of my favorite places in the world to hunt, Northwest Oklahoma. This is a pretty laid back and lazy hunt for me, but I'm still faced with the same challenges I have every year out here. How in the hell am I gonna make another whitetail episode not be boring? How can I make hours and hours of sitting in a tree stand actually interesting to watch? Well, I guess I can just crack a few hillbilly jokes, rip off some old pigman lines, and crank up the classic butt rock. I'm back. Come up here, boy. Welcome to Mordor. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. Father's done a big buck like that to his damn cameras. Patience is definitely a virtue that I have. Or laziness. This thing's a tank. It's a bad day right there. You thought I was kidding about the cheesy taglines and the butt rock, didn't you? Nope. My goals with this week's hunt are easy. Find a big deer and kill him. Use more than one Brian Quokka line, shoot more slow motion shots than my good buddy Jason Matzinger, and make even the most hardened of non-whitetail hunters like Remy Warren want to go out and give it a try. When it comes to hunting white-tailed deer, there are really only two weeks out of the year that I even care to dedicate any time towards it. And now is the prime time. Bucks are cruising all over the countryside and it feels almost unfair to see how one-minded these bucks are. I feel like if I put in my time, sooner or later a big gnarly buck is likely to walk under the stand. Awesome in theory, but reality often has its own course. I've set up my tree stand in a spot that I've always wanted to, but never have in all the years hunting this place. This tree is as bare as your backside. There's no real back cover or front cover to help conceal my movements. But this is the spot that I want to be. I've watched bucks cruise through this pinch point for years, and now I'm in it. I'll just have to sit real still, watch my movement, and keep quiet, and hope that they come through with their heads down. So far, the plan is working. Kind of. For the last few days, I've had deer funneling past me throughout most of the day. It's the rut, so potentially a big deer could be cruising anywhere at any time. So on this hunt, from here on out, I plan on making all-day sets. All-day sits, that is, if my patience can handle it. The sun's coming out a little bit. I'm up here like a turd in a fishbowl now. Check, check.
want anything to do with those calls. And he with the grunt and the snort wheeze. And he just walked away. And I rattled. Then he ran away. It's a good deer. Solid, solid. Eight or nine point. Might be able to get a crack at him in the morning. Well, decided now it's a good time to talk to the camera because the train's going by and the cows are going crazy. So I got a little cover noise because it's pretty quiet this morning. Had a few deer come right down here beside me. I didn't, couldn't really move because they were on my down inside. Then another doe, 25 yards right, right here past me. <clears throat> a few other deer out in the field. Really not much to speak of this morning. Not like yesterday. There's a buck right there. This big buck seems to have come out of nowhere, and he's heading from the bedding out towards the fields, which is kind of backwards from what they normally do in the mornings. But what he's doing is out scent checking for does. So what I want to do is try to get his attention with some light grunts, and if I have to, hit the horns. When this buck turned his head and started to beeline towards my direction, I got to admit, I kind of peed a little. I wasn't expecting him to come that fast. I'm in a bad place because I'm kind of rattled. I'm reaching for the bow or the camera. In either case, this buck is coming and he's coming hard. first thought that came to my mind besides damn it was was it you that missed or was it your bow just like it is in every case it's usually me Stand tonight. 
I might have to give him the old slip. Huh, fellas? After totally botching it on a great buck this morning, I've hit the local grub house, grabbed a donut or two, and loaded up on way too much caffeine. And now, I'm getting myself back in the saddle again. I've hung a new set on the other side of the CRP, where that buck came from this morning, and where I saw an even bigger buck come out a couple of days ago. Just like the tree before, this is a spot that I always felt like I needed to be. I'm only 10 feet off the ground here, and as they always say, it's way better to be in the wrong tree in the right spot than in the wrong spot with a great tree. I'm getting there, getting to the story. Both this morning and yesterday morning, both big bucks would have been killed out of this tree. What they shot at the one that I rattled in originally came right here, was right under this tree. If you didn't hear what I just said because I screwed up and had the wrong setting on my mic this morning, what happened was both big bucks that I had seen this week would have been killed if I was sitting out of this stand. So with any luck this afternoon and in the morning, one of those two big bucks that I'm after will walk under this tree one more time. Couldn't decide which stand to hunt this morning because the wind was good for both of them. But obviously I made the wrong choice because both bucks that I'm after, right under the tree, I mean the big, big buck, just walked right around it, was standing there for a while. The other buck actually bed down 40 yards from the tree stand, so. Made the unlucky choice this morning. I'm gonna, uh, Work back over there, get my camera arm and everything set up back in that stand. Hunt it this evening. And then watch the deer come under this stand. What's that popular phrase or saying or whatever? Murphy's Law? Bad luck? Karma? You stink or you can't catch me? Whatever it is, regardless of my bad luck, bad judgment, or just poor choice of stand location, I'm back in my original spot. What's funny is that my confidence level in catching up to one of these two bucks is as high as ever. They're visible, and that's not always the case with a big mature deer. If these guys keep showing up, I'm either going to get a chance to put an arrow in one, or come a few days from now when the gun season opens up, revenge will be mine.
is 31 yards. It's a good deer. I guess just sit here and give it some time. I've come back in here. I gave him plenty of time. Here's the arrow. What I'm gonna do is go in here where he went in. I mean, I, I didn't want to penetrate at all, so I'm gonna go in and look for any blood. And you can see here where he ran off, you can see his footprints, where he dug in. Let's see what we find. Now we're rolling. Check, check. Ah, that's a cool deer right there, man. Awesome buck. Super highs and lows. I mean, you hear it all the time. But this buck gave me the slip one morning. Walked under my stand while I was in the other stand another morning. And, uh, you know, didn't know if I, and then I lost him for a couple of days. So he must have got hooked up with the doe, locked up. And then this morning, this morning, he just came through. I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting him. I was expecting a deer, you know. I didn't, I knew that I had lost him for a couple of days, figured he was with some does, but just a cool, cool buck, man. Well, that's about all, folks. Story is, man hunts cattle farm, man finds deer, man kills deer, man eats deer. There's just so much I love about tree stand hunting for whitetail. Maybe it's the chess match you play with these big bucks, or just the peaceful sunrises and sunsets you get to experience each day out of the stand. I think for me it has everything to do with timing and location. Hunting the same area for years on end and finally feeling like I've got it all figured out. At least for now. Next season could be completely different. What I'm hunting here is a place that I've been hunting for a lot of years. And it's just cattle, which is good because last week I was told the calves were in here too. So. These just look like a bunch of heifers. And maybe steers. Who knows? I didn't look underneath them. Nice calm herd. Everywhere I go, cows. They just follow my truck everywhere. I can't park anywhere on this property. Got all this property to hunt. And I can't park anywhere because these cows just follow me everywhere. Takes me off. Look at this. Every hunt I go on has highs and lows and lots of challenges. Some natural and others man-caused. But when the hunt comes to its close, it seems like it's your attitude and perseverance that win the day. And today, the victory is mine. Well, I forgot my binoculars. I fell, dragging my deer, and they are all in my butt. It's in my butt, and I can't see my butt. Can you see my butt? 